conversion to evolution. I think it's okay. I, I haven't to give you really clear definition, but I or at least I show you some examples. Yes. Uh, I think. Uh, and uh, these time I already used all of all, almost all of these terms, and the median and the paired thing will be explained in this presentation. And the neural crest cell is okay. Somite, epithelial, mesenchyma, the cells, Hox gene cluster. You already checked. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then, and then the, this is the final part, and uh, uh, able able of twin tail goldfish, and uh, I have still I have thirty uh, forty minutes, and then uh, it's okay. I can explain. And uh, uh, goldfish able 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 of twin tail goldfish is uh, yeah I used. The, the hagfish as a model, not model species, hagfish for my research. And I faced uh, so many difficulties. And uh, I, the, what kind of difficulty occurred is uh, I couldn't make hybrid. hybrid. So uh, the to remove the ambiguity of the the in the field of the morphology, the morphologists spend a lot, a lot of the effort uh, to make solid science people use the molecular marker and the genome sequencing data and comparing uh, to find, try to find the consistency or inconsistency between molecular data and the morphological data and applying developmental biology. Uh, they try to merge together the molecular event and the morphological phenomena. And uh, I thought that I want to apply the uh, genetic technique, but uh, uh, I show you this kind of figure. Shark and hagfish mate each other and make the next F1 generation and the back cross with shark and F2 generation and we get a paired finless shark and uh, the conventional shark and compare their genome. is almost impossible. Almost impossible. Then, if I, even though people willing, like I want to study about uh, large scale morphological evolution, but uh, it's impossible to compare uh, between highly diverged group. So then, oh, I am now I'm interested in the selection developmental systems and the large scale morphological changes. How uh, they l related is uh, one of the big topics in my laboratory. And then uh, now I'm using goldfish because they are, they are <laughs> always this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, they, because they are the same species, Carassius oratus, but this one is more, the, the morphological diversity is really, really nice. They, they, this, uh, the ornamental goldfish strain contains so many highly, morphologically highly diverged strains. And conventional, well, this one, the Working strain has a looks like a conventional fish uh, shape, but uh, this one has a popped eye and the bifurcated caudal fin. And this Oranda species, Oranda strain, has a has a helmet or a food like structure, and and they are generated by the uh, human a breeder and the fungier during domestication. And even though they are highly diverged, they can mate each other. And uh, the process of the uh, appearance of these highly diverged uh, strains are di well described in the uh, early, early Chinese archives. And uh, by checking this kind of the, uh, description, we can identify the timing when and which strains are isolated or diverged. And uh, ease of the handling of the observation of the embryo also important point. So. Then this, this, um, this, they are uh, from the goldfish uh, parents, and they are, fat, they are goldfish fertilized eggs and the embryo, and this is looks, looks like zebrafish uh, embryo. Then it's quite uh, easy for the handling, and uh, we can apply any kind of, uh, not any kind of, but uh, uh, some really nicely sophisticated uh, zebrafish technique uh, to the uh, goldfish, and this is quite a nice point. 
And the goldfish fin is let's focusing on the goldfish fin. I want to explain basic body part or basic body plan of the fish and uh, goldfish and the twin tail goldfish also. This is a wild type. Wild type sounds strange, but in my presentation I use the the goldfish which has no uh, mutation in the actual skeleton or fins and uh, the head region is called as a wild type, even though this one shows a little bit pale and orangish color. And in the wild type goldfish, you can recognize dorsal fin. You recognize dorsal fin, caudal fin, anal fin, and the pelvic and the pectoral fins, right? And uh, uh, these pelvic and the pectoral fins are uh, by uh, bilaterally located, pectoral, pelvic, pectoral, pelvic, like this. Okay, then using now, I can ask you, uh, I will give you kind of the, the, the question, I will ask you then, using serial homology, can you identify the serial homology in this uh, picture? It's quite a, for example, scales, they're exactly the same. It looks like same uh, pattern, same kind of the, the scales are locating. And oh, this one and this one, for example, let's compare between twin tail and this uh, wild type and this twin tail goldfish. Like dorsal fin? Dorsal fin and the fin rays are also kind of serial homolog. This first, uh, first like fin, fin rays. Like fin rays, like the position of, of the, uh, the number. Number, it's quite, yeah, yeah, it looks like, yeah, serial homolog. Yeah, right? Okay, then let's see the pectoral and the pelvic fin. Is uh, people recognize the serial homolog? And I also, mm, yeah, the uh, relationship is a serial homolog. And I also uh, can, s we also can say the pelvic fin is homologous with our leg. And the pectoral fin is uh, our arm, right? Right. Right, 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 right. Right, and, uh, and in the daily life, you can see the, your hand. And uh, your hand, the finger, and uh, your leg's finger also, the, their relationship for the serial home. It's quite annoying. And uh, the median fin, the anal and the caudal fins are located on the m in the in the middle line of their body, right? Okay. Then this is a wild type fins location, and the dorsal fin also middle line located the fin. And the twin tail goldfish also has a pectoral and the pelvic fin, and the dorsal caudal anal fin. And in this picture. Uh, you recognize caudal fin is bifurcated and the anal fin is also bifurcated and this is a different species and from ven ven ventral view you can see that the anal and the caudal fins are bifurcated and the pelvic and the pectoral fins are originally located on the bilateral area. It sounds really stra strange oh pelvic and the pectoral fins are serial homolog yes because they are bilaterally located, the shape is similar. And the dorsal caudal anal fin, maybe they are not serial homolog or not, I have no idea, but at least they are the fin. Okay, and how about the pelvic fin and the anal fin? Of anal fin rays as kind of serial homolog, but uh, the anal fin and the pelvic fins are different because their location is totally different. Anal fin is located on the midline. Pelvic fins are bilaterally located. Yeah, they must be different things. I Technically, think. the location are mm. similar. Mm. And the much more complicated thing is uh, how about in the how about in the anal fins in the twin tail goldfish? They look alike, but uh, uh -huh. sometimes the numbers of the fin rays are different. Different, yeah. The problem problem with uh, uh, for we uh, four leg animals, insect has uh, six legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Octopus has uh, eight legs. Yes, we are different. But uh, if you recognize anal fin and the caudal fin in the twin tail goldfish are homologous with the pelvic and the pectoral fin. This sounds really strange. Twin tail goldfish will get uh, 
totally eight legs, which is similar with octopus, then this one is octopus. It cannot be. It's really strange. But uh, the point is, uh, this morphology is really unusual. I mean, uh, basically, uh, fin or limbs or uh, fin, uh, the fin is easier, fin of the fish can be distinguished to two different categories. Paired fins and medium fins. And uh, paired fins are pectoral and pelvic fins. And they are homologous with our legs and arm. And the medium fins, dorsal, anal, caudal fins, they are conserved in the, all of the vertebrates. Some, in some the lineage, uh, the caudal or dorsal or anal fins are missing, but uh, basically they are conserved. And, uh, there is almost no exception they are located on the midline of the body, the, on the sagittal plane of the, the, the located on the midline. But uh, in the twin tail goldfish, they show the bifurcated pattern. And it sounds strange. And the morphology and the history of the goldfish is uh, like this. And then, then uh, wild the type goldfish has a the single caudal fin and this fin is consist of the skeleton and this skeleton is connected with the vertebral axial skeleton right and uh, you uh, in this level at this level i made a transverse section and you can you see these uh, uh, skeletons cartilaginous element and in the twin tail goldfish, oh, fin is bifurcated. Caudal fin and the do, uh, anal fin is bifurcated. But not only, not only uh, shape, uh, appearance, the inside skeleton also bifurcated. This means that part of the actual skeleton is bifurcated. And this bifurcation of the actual skeleton happened around 1,000 years ago to uh, 600 to 400 years ago, uh, uh, 400 years ago. I mean, uh, uh, from Son to Ming Dynasty, people intensively try to uh, breed the strange shape. And uh, uh, around this Ming Dynasty, in this, around this time, Ming Dynasty, uh, bifurcated the caudal fin strain were fixed as a uh, pop uh, in the in a, in a gold ornamental goldfish population. Then I repeatedly I repeat I said several times evolution, especially morphological evolution, need time. Yes, time needed. But uh, this event is uh, quite a short time. We don't need the the, the, the million or million or the, the, the several thousand, the 10,000 or 100,000, just a, a hundred, several hundred years is enough to make this kind of strange morphology, what's happened. So then people ask me to do the genome project to, and compare between them is one of the way, but uh, I, I want to, uh, I want, I am a lazy person, then I used a much more easier way. I compared between goldfish and zebrafish at the embryonic stage, and I found this mutant, the dino mutant. And the twin tail goldfish shows this type of the phenotype. And the coding gene is known as one of the dorsal ventral patterning gene. This is embryo, lateral view of the embryo, and the coding gene expressed the dorsal side and they suppress the BMP genes, and they form the dorsal ventral pattern. And this is quite important point. So then, then, then protostome and deuterostome, this expression pattern is really different in, this, uh, in, in these genes. And in the goldfish lineage, I found two coding genes, coding A and coding B genes, and the coding A gene, I found the stop codon mutation. And, uh, in the nine, di in the nine different goldfish strange strains, uh, eight of them are twin tail goldfish, and all of the twin tail goldfish strains show the uh, the homo homozygous of the stop codon mutation, which is called as a E127X. And in the back cross analysis, also I totally check the. Uh, my uh, my colleague or totally checked the 296 individuals and all of the twin tail goldfish show the 
this genotype. The, all, both, uh, all of them have a, a stop codon mutation as a homozygous. So then this means that the mutation, the stop codon mutation is a responsible gene. And then, okay, this is a responsible gene. Sounds great, but uh, the, when I ask the, this uh, about uh, coding gene to the zebrafish researcher, zebrafish researcher said, uh, coding mutant tend to die really easy, but uh, we know that goldfish, twin-tail goldfish uh, lives, lives very well. Uh, how was it, Bicha? Uh, annually, we maintain the so many goldfish, and they they are really nicely uh, live in our aquarium tank. Well, at least the survival rate can be higher than mm -hmm. fifty percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then, this mean uh, uh, goldfish and zebrafish should be different. But what is different? I thought that. The Goldfish has two uh, gene coding A and coding B gene, and I and I thought that oh, uh, I said and uh, I firstly I have to explain the result of the micro injection. So then this experiment said genetically the coding A gene mutation and the uh, twin tail goldfish phenotype is linked together, and the micro injection of the coding A gene said. Uh, in this experiment, we succeed in the single tail goldfish. But uh, basically, coding mutant tend to die really easily, but the coding, there is coding B gene in the goldfish. And I also injected coding B messenger RNA uh, into the twin tail goldfish embryo, and the result is the same between coding A and coding B gene injected embryo. But uh, it sounds, again, it sounds strange. Is if A and B is the same function, B always compensates the function of the mutation of coding A gene. But uh, we can easily recognize this kind of the phenotype just one mutation in coding A gene. This means A and B should be diverged. So then uh, this is an analysis of the gene expression pattern and the dorsal view of the coding G A and B gene. Oh. Ah. Coding A and B gene. And A and B genes are different. Slightly different. This is a dorsal view of the embryo, and A and B is different. And B is narrow, shows a narrower expression pattern. And this, uh, to explain all of the, this scheme is really complicated, then just I used, used this scheme. Wild type goldfish has two coding genes, and the dino mutant of the zebrafish missing the coding gene, and this one shows a lethal phenotype, but the twin tail goldfish still meant have a coding B gene, and their expression patterns are slightly diverse. Then, then this, uh, this, uh, sub this is called sub-functionalization. Then this sub-functionalized expression pattern avoid the over-reduction of the dorsal part of the embryo, and uh, uh, but this uh, reduction of the coding A gene allowed to express the bifurcated fin primordia, bifurcated embryonic caudal fin, and finally, this one shows the uh, twin tail goldfish uh, morphology. This kind of the, the change of the developmental, large scale uh, change of the developmental process happened in the ancestor of the ornamental goldfish, and it just take uh, quite short time. Just time, this kind of morphology can be appeared. And uh, this result is really good, but uh, why can't we find the twin tail common carp? Then common carp and the goldfish share the same common ancestor, and they are same uh, group. They are, they are categorized into the, the same uh, group, and they also then this one, the goldfish and the common carp also experience the same uh, selective pressure. This is quite uh, okay. This is quite analogous with uh, uh, evolutionary process. Sounds like a convergent evolution could be happened. I mean, uh, if 
a fish breeder want to get the twin tail common carp a common carp should be appear that have you seen the twin tail common carp no basically no the twin tail ornamental animal is uh, i think to my knowledge just only goldfish for example twin tail cat twin tail dog no basically not sometimes twin tail twin head snake or twin head shark occasionally accidentally found but they cannot make next generation they tend to die tend to die they, they yes tend to die but some people feel that oh this is a sign from the super nature or super being or god or something like this and then twin tail goldfish also maybe early time people feel that oh this is something special okay let's keep it the, in the same context if one find if one found twin tail common cup with a really beautiful color it should be fixed as a strain but yes. at least i haven't seen this kind of the strain why i it's I'm curious and i i wanted to make this kind of twin tail common cup and the good thing is goldfish and the common cup share the twin coding a and b gene, uh, have a coding a and b gene and the re using recent technique we can just reduce the function of the common carp uh, coding a or coding b gene at that time when i published this paper just we inject the coding a morpholino using morpholino you can reduce the function of the coding genes in in the common carp and uh, i did the experiment firstly to check our technique whether morpholino work or works or not, I injected the coding a morpholino into coding a, a common uh, the goldfish, and the injection of the coding a gene uh, shown us this kind of the twin tail morphology, or oh, which is similar with twin tail goldfish. Oh, good. Let's apply the same technique to the goldfish and the common carp and. Uh, and the result is uh, yes uh, in the uh, to confirm efficiency i checked the goldfish uh, embryo which is injected uh, morpholino yes this expression pattern is similar with uh, dino mutant of the zebrafish and uh, okay let's try this uh, same technique to the common carp or not so easy okay But not so easy in common cup. So gene expression pattern is highly, largely modified. This is wild type. The ventral side, the ventral side, the sizzled gene expressed, but uh, it's quite limited in the non-injected one. And the coding a morpholino injected common cup embryo shows that, the, which is same with the uh, uh, twin tail goldfish. But uh, the final shape is like this. I tried so many times, but uh, it's quite the same. And this is already not um, uh, it, it is already published, which shows a slightly bifurcated thing fold, but finally became like this. Then the answer is like is I think the answer is in the expression pattern of the coding A and the coding B gene. Then the coding A and the B genes in the goldfish, their expression pattern is highly diverse. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, differentiated, the partially overlapping. But coding aging, I checked uh, using different probes. Uh, we checked the expression pattern, but they, the results said the complete shows a completely overlapping expression pattern of the coding A and the coding B gene. Then then this means that they work as a backup circuit or buffering system. Then even the one gene, coding A gene, is uh, uh, like a modified it cannot make any uh, nice the bifurcated caudal fin morphology then answer to the, this question is uh, yeah uh, naturally a system in the developmental system in the common cup doesn't allow us to make twin tail morphology of course we can do but it takes takes a little bit more complicated step in this slide uh, we can 
let's compare. We compare the among the zebra, between zebrafish, common carp, goldfish, which one has a potential to make highly diverged twin tail uh, morphology at the caudal region. In the zebrafish, uh, the coding gene reduced and it died. It cannot be the subject of the selection. And the common carp doesn't show any bifurcated caudal fin, then breeders and the fanchia cannot isolate the bifurcated caudal fin morphology, then this cannot uh, go one step further, just to stay as a no phenotype single fin, no phenotype single fin. And in the, just only the goldfish lineage, there is two genes, two duplicated genes, and one of them are uh, uh, they are subfunctionalized, or their function are diverged, and the mutation happened. And this mutation caused the bifurcated caudal fin, and the human give a strong selective pressure and established the ornamental twin tail phenotype. Then people really like a random mutation and combination of the random mutation, and we need a long, 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 long time, evolutionary time equal large-scale morphological evolution, but uh, I think the mutation and the selection in the certain order, not rather than the combination, the permutation is quite important. I think which kind of permutation allow us, uh, allow us to skip this kind of the really long divergence, long uh, geological time uh, course. Is, how can we skip this kind of geological time course and make this kind of highly diverged morphology is a, one of the research topics in my laboratory. I think I have uh, other readings, other readings, other readings, other readings. Uh, uh, mm, uh, in the final part, part three, I mentioned about uh, uh, goldfish evolution, but this is a uh, slightly differ from the conventional vertebrate morphology. This book deal with uh, uh, something happened in nature, but how about in the goldfishes? Um, goldfish is influenced by the artificial... Artificial selection, yeah, domestication or artificial selection. Then, so uh, our system has a limitation and the advantage, and the, the really classic uh, morpho comparative morphology also has a limitation and advantage. So think about what is a strong point and what is weakness that we have to think about and how we use the goldfish. And uh, to use the goldfish, we definitely <laughs> learn the classic uh, morphology or anatomy uh, based on the like uh, this kind of the conventional uh, conventional or wi wild type or uh, the something happened in nature. <laughs>